In the past, I have responded to a few of Creation Moments pages and videos where they try to disprove that evolution occurs. I came across this one discussing how malaria is becoming more resilient to the drugs we use to combat it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Let's just see what this one has to say. That's evolution for you. That's what Dr. Rick Fairhurst, a malaria researcher at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, said when talking about malaria parasites that are becoming resistant to drugs that have been effective at fighting the deadly disease. Yes, the current strain of malaria is changing to become more resilient to the drugs that we're using to fight it. What does it have to do with the validity of evolutionary theory except strengthening it? Evolution is about how organisms change and the explanation of the diversity of life on this planet. Evolution is powerful. Evolution is amazing. Nobody ever said evolution is nice. These parasites have evolved to thrive, even if as a byproduct it harms their host, in this case humans. Science News laments that there is no approved vaccine against the protozoan malaria parasite which is spread by mosquitoes and causes fevers, chills, convulsions and more severe symptoms. The whole point of the article is that, quote, the history of malaria treatment is peppered with drugs to which the parasite has become resistant, unquote. But as Creation Moments has pointed out many times in the past, drug-resistant bacteria didn't get that way through evolution. Drug-resistant bacteria represents a loss of information. And is it changing to have a better chance to survive and thrive? Evolution doesn't say that populations must become more complex, just that they can be more complex. In general, a more complex creature is more likely to thrive, but not always. If an organism has a better chance to thrive or become more efficient by losing some property, they will evolve to lose it. Since they thrived after moving underground, the star-nosed mole doesn't need its eyes, and it's inefficient for the body to provide energy for eyes they don't use. So, these moles have become almost blind by slowly losing their unneeded sight, making their bodies more efficient overall by losing something. Bacteria and viruses have multiple ways to combat drug and antibiotic treatment. If a treatment targets a specific feature of that organism, it may lose that feature, or it may develop a new way to combat that treatment. It would be like saying that you have evolved resistance to tennis elbow because you lost both your arms in a car accident. No, the Lamarckian idea of evolution, in which the changes an organism goes through after forming will be passed on to its descendants, has been discredited. Even if somebody loses their arms, their children will still have the ability to grow arms because the genetic code for appendages is still in the reproductive cells of the person who lost their limbs. If a parasite changed on a genetic level, a change in features, in this case losing a feature that allows them to survive, will be passed on to their offspring. But it's an interesting idea, let's play around with it. Let's say there was some hypothetical disease that, for whatever reason, targets the tendons in the elbow. It's 100% fatal if contracted. And, for this hypothetical scenario, since it targets elbow tendons, the smaller the tendon a person has, the less likely it'll be contracted. Quiet, it's just a thought experiment. Eventually, the population will grow shorter and shorter tendons, as over time, those with longer tendons will be weeded out and less likely to pass on their long elbow tendon genes. To evolutionists, though, everything is an example of evolution. This is nothing but shoddy thinking, resulting from what they already believe to be true. As opposed to your way of thinking, where everything is an example of creation? The difference is that we have evidence for evolution. It's been shown through both the fossil record and in laboratory settings. If we have evidence for a natural process, then we can use that to explain the results of that process. Your argument is no different than saying, gravitationalists are constantly using gravity to explain why objects keep falling to the ground. That's just shoddy thinking. It is the same kind of bad thinking that led to the banning of DDT, a harmless pesticide that kills parasite-carrying mosquitoes. DDT could have prevented the deaths of millions. It is no less tragic when scientists say, that's evolution for you, when it has nothing whatsoever to do with evolution. But it has everything to do with evolution. The malaria parasites have changed, or evolved, to be more resistant to the cocktail of chemicals that are used to fight against it. Grow up. Dr. Fairhurst talks about how longer treatments are now needed to combat malaria. It's like working with a child. 
Ironically, where DDT is still being used, mosquitoes are developing, or evolving, a resistance to it as well. When tested in places where DDT is banned, the mosquito population shows less resistance to it than places where it's used. So, your argument is leading us to more evidence of evolution. This means that overuse of DDT will make it less effective over time as well. As a bonus, they added a little prayer to the transcript of their video that, for some reason, never made it in. Heavenly Father, while science has given us DDT, environmental activists have taken it away. I pray that world leaders will realize that human life is of infinitely more worth than imagined threats to our environment. Amen. DDT does affect the environment. It's been shown to cause liver damage to humans and cancer in non-human tests, and it's better to err on the side of caution when balancing the risks versus the rewards. We just need to look at the damage the litamide did to understand that caution should be taken when exposing people to potentially dangerous compounds. DDT is still being used in parts of the world where the danger of malaria outweighs the risk DDT itself would cause. I don't know if you realize this, but we're kind of dependent on the environment. If we end up changing it enough that we can't survive, and we don't want extinction, humanity will have to do its own rapid evolving, which is never pretty. Ask the dinosaurs that are around now. Their environment changed, and their descendants are quite different these days. Mm -hmm.